Hello, I'm Roger Bisbee from the Skill Builder channel. Today I'm tackling a bit of underfloor heating. We use the underfloor heating store, they supply the drawing, they supply the materials, and they will give you all the guidance you need to choose the right system for the job. Now, in this particular case, we're going onto a concrete sand cement screed, if you like. And what we've done, first of all, is to go over with a self-leveling screed just to get rid of all the imperfections. And that means when we come to lay the screed board, it just gives us a much easier run of it. We could just use a notch trowel, comb through with a cement-based tile adhesive, again supplied by the underfloor heating store, and that will stick the screed boards down ready to go. They also provide a polyurethane adhesive which you can use to stick the panels together. So if you were putting the panels down on something like a timber floor and you didn't want to put the cement underneath it, you could simply use it as a floating floor over the whole timber floor and just stick the panels together with the adhesive in between. So that's another way of doing it. Now, the great thing about the system we're using here is it is a low build system. So if you're stuck for height and you can't manage to get a high build system in, then it's perfectly okay using a low build system. If the floor isn't insulated, I'm afraid you are gonna lose a bit of heat, but the compensation for the fact that you are losing a bit of heat through the floor, if you like, is the fact that it's a very fast warm-up system. So you don't need to have it on for as long as you do with, say, a pipe and screed system. You don't have the same thermal mass. You've got a quick response. The tiles are just directly in contact with the pipe itself. So you will find that if you put the heating on maybe an hour before you get up, you come down into the kitchen and the floor is nice and warm. If you're not using a low build system, the other option is to use a piping screed system where you put the pipe down onto the insulation. First of all, put the membrane, polythene membrane down and then either clip the pipe into the Celotex or whatever insulation you're using or you can use a tray system that you put on top of the insulation and that, just, that makes it just easier to press the pipe into the system and get the, the runs right. But whichever way you do it, you will have the drawing to guide you through the whole thing step by step. So when you've got the pipe laid in either the screed or the screed board, it's essential to test it before you start covering it up. So we don't want to test it after we've tiled the floor. But this pipe is extremely robust. It's a multi-layered pipe. I've never known it leak, quite honestly. I've done a lot of underfloor heating systems. I've never had a problem with a pipe leaking except where somebody has drilled through it. A really good idea is to lay the pipes out, take a photograph, put a tape measure so you can see exactly where all the pipes are. So if at any time in the future somebody's thinking, can I drill through there or not? They've got that plan, they've got those photographs, got a photographic record to go with, but you can also find the pipes just by using a simple infrared camera and that will show you very precisely the layout of the pipes when the heating is running through them. So there's really nothing to worry about with unfloor heating. People think, oh, what if it has a leak? But as I say, I've never known it happen and it is a lot cheaper to run than, say, the electric underfloor heating system. So I would always recommend, if you can, to get a warm water underfloor heating system rather than an electric one. But if you don't have the facilities for doing that, then by all means go for the electric one. But if you're trying to heat a room rather than just using it to warm the tiles up, if you like, then the warm water system is far better for that. Another very important thing that I must mention is when you put a pipe through a wall, you must put some sleeving on it. A lot of people don't bother with this. Now, when the pipe is in the grooves, if you like, or in the screed, the expansion and contraction is taking place within the pipe wall itself. But when it's free, when it's going through a wall, there is that chance of a little bit of movement on the pipe. So if you had rough brickwork inside that wall, for example, and that pipe was moving backwards and forwards for 20 years, expanding and contracting, you could find that it would wear a hole in the pipe work, or if there was any kind of movement in the building, it could damage a pipe. So all I do is use a simple bit of electrical conduit, which you can get from electrical wholesalers, and just sleeve the pipe wherever it goes through any kind of place, like a wall or so on, then just put that sleeve on there. And also, if you're putting an expansion joint in the floor, say between two rooms, it's a good idea to put a little bit of sleeving on the pipe between the two rooms, because at that point you will get that tiny bit of movement on the pipe. So always good practice to do that. The great thing is that with the underfloor heating system, 
you can use low temperatures, which means it's more economical. It means that if you're using a condensing high efficiency boiler as we do these days, it will run for longer in the condensing mode. And therefore your efficiencies on the boiler will be up in the 90% rather than lower. So unlike radiators, running at that lower temperature means you get more efficiency. But I would just say another thing. We've got a room here which has got a skylight in it. It's got a quite a high ceiling if you like. And if you've got something like a high ceiling, vaulted ceiling, barn conversion, then underfloor heating is absolutely the way to go. And the reason for that is that underfloor heating uses radiated heat, not convected heat. So what you've basically got is it's heating the objects, the people in the room, rather than the air. Now if you use radiators, you've got convection and it would have to heat the top of the room and then gradually it would stratify down to where you are. So you'd find the top of the room was a lot hotter than the bottom. But with underfloor heating, it starts at the floor. So you've got warm feet and basically you just feel it's a lot more comfortable. So the thermal comfort of an underfloor heating system is greater even though the temperature is lower. And that's something a lot of people don't quite understand. I have arguments with people where they go, how can it be radiated heat? It must be convected, but it can't be convected because there's nothing to replace it underneath. If you're going to convect heat, you need colder air coming down underneath and pushing the hot air up. And if you don't have that, then you don't get a convection current. And we could prove this, we could just put a smoke bomb in here when the underfloor heating's on and you would see that you didn't have that convection current that you would have with a radiator. So the bottom line is that underfloor heating is not only cheaper to run, it's more comfortable and it links up perfectly with modern appliances such as low temperature condensing boilers and heat pumps. So I hope I've covered this in enough detail for you, but if I haven't and you've got any questions, you can put them in the comments below. You can also contact the Underfloor Heating Store and they will give you loads of advice and help you choose the system that's right for your house.